Hey folks, greetings from the Offensive Security Group coming at you with a new episode of the Cyber Threat Perspective. This is part two of our two-part series where we're talking about pen testing certifications. Uh, specifically, we're ranking them on a tier list. So today I've got with me again, Darius and Tyler, who are two uh, awesome pen testers on the team here at Secure IT 360. Uh, so this is going to be part two. Like I said, uh, this is going to be uh, probably the most debated uh episode that we've done so far i don't know maybe um there probably a lot of hot takes um so if you guys uh who are watching and, and listening if you have any feedback on how we rank these on our tier list um or if you listen to episode one and you have feedback uh we'd love to hear it we'd love to hear your thoughts on these certifications uh in uh everything about them so without further ado uh, I say, Darius, Tyler, let's just rehash kind of what we're doing here real quick. Uh, we'll talk about the tier list at a high level and just uh, reintroduce kind of our ranking system, Darius, uh, and then we'll start ranking these. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if you've seen a tier list before, you probably already know, but if not, you know, we're ranking it from S all with, you know, that being the highest tier all the way down to D, that being considered, you know, somewhat low tier. Um and as far as criteria goes, we're looking at, okay, what's the, you know, knowledge gained from the certification uh, to, you know, what's the clout that comes from it? So, you, you know, we're getting these certs. You're, you're probably getting certs because you want a job, right? So how much does that cert line up with that? Um, the test format. So, you know, is it multiple choice? Um, you know, is there a practical portion, things of that nature? Um, how does it, you know, relate to the real world? Um, and then, you know, what's the community around it? And then finally, you know, the cost. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we, uh, as you see, uh, if, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, if you watch the previous episode, we are putting, um, the tier list on the screen and we're kind of doing it somewhat interactively. So if you're listening on, uh, Apple podcasts or Spotify or something, you want to see the video of us ranking them and stuff like that, uh, jump over to YouTube. That's where we'll be hosting that. And it's at Cyber Threat POV on YouTube. Uh, we're at offsec.blog and pretty much under that name everywhere else. So, uh, yeah, so let's jump into it. Uh, so, we're starting with the SANS certification. So, again, uh, starting to get a little juicy here in terms of uh, hot takes, I think. So, G Pen, uh, I took the G Pen. So, I'll start off and then I'm curious of your guys' thoughts. But, G Pen, uh, when I took it, uh, the course content itself, uh, this was last year, was really good. Uh, I thought it was a good overview of pen testing. Uh, I had already been doing pen testing for a little bit when I took it. Uh, I had already taken the PNPT, which we'll talk about uh, and past that. Uh, so I already had some introductory pen testing knowledge and I was already doing it on the job. So GPEN for me felt like a, a lot of uh, review on a lot of the material I've already learned and already kind of covered in other courses. Um, so the course content was pretty good. I thought it was very well done for somebody getting into pen testing. Uh, one of the, the drawbacks that I had with it is shortly after I took the exam, uh, they announced that they're releasing a, a new updated version of GPEN with all new course content. <laughs> and of course, sure and of course, you know, you don't get access to that. There's no subscriber or anything like that. You have to pay for the, the course again. Um, so that was kind of a bummer to me that I put all that hard work and effort into learning the material and studying and preparing, creating a, uh, you know, an index and then taking the exam. And then, you know, a few months later is new course content. And I felt like everything that I had learned was like out of date and irrelevant, right? That's not true. Obviously the, the course content is, is very evergreen. Um, but that's kind of how I felt, uh, initially. Um, so that's just my initial opening thoughts on GPEN. I'm curious, Darius, Tyler, what, what you guys think about GPEN? Yeah, so what I think GMP, GP, the GPEN, um, one, you know, job marketability, I definitely think it's one of those certs that, you know, gets you past HR. I mean, you see it, you see it listed often. I, I'll say that. Um, I think the thing with SANS, in my opinion on it, is, you know, it's very hit or miss. It depends on, one, which course you decide to take and how fleshed out it is but two i think it largely depends on the instructor you have as well um mm. and i feel like you have some instructors who they're gonna you know 
really get into the nuts and bolts and go like beyond just the coursework. But then yep. I have some that you know they they're just going to read off the slide sheet, the the, uh, the PowerPoint, and yep. you know that's what you get. So I do think it's kind of a, a toss up. Um, I I think the true value of Sans honestly is the I guess the community that you get behind it. So you know if you are able to go in person, um, you're going to network. You're going to get an interest an industry recognized cert. You know, hey, that's that's great. Um, I think the cost, though, yep. that's that's where I think mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, was, Sands gets kind of shaky. Yeah, that's what it's kind of um, leading up to, I guess, in this discussion, right? Is course content is pretty good uh, for GPEN. Tim Medine is an excellent instructor, um, very widely respected in the industry, uh, awesome instructor. Um, and, you know, the exam itself, uh, I thought was fairly well done. Uh, I have said this before. I thought the GPEN exam was a little bit clunky in that you have to go to an exam center. You do the normal like, you know, uh, exam thing where you sign in and, and there's, you know, all that stuff. But then the, the the examination is somewhat practical. So there's multiple choice, a lot of that. But there is some practical aspects of it. And it kind of spins up a machine and you have to click in and, and do stuff on a Linux machine or something like that. So there is some interactiveness and, and practicality with it, but I did feel it was a bit clunky. It felt disjointed. It didn't have a, a common flow, right? It was a lot of times it was independent questions or a couple questions together, but then the, the price, right? Which is what you alluded to Darius is it's what it nine, eight or 9,000 for a course now. Yep. Yep. And then at that point you have to factor in what hotel travel. Yeah. If you're traveling. Uh, yep. Et cetera. Yeah. And uh, you know, for a, a lot of co- a lot of companies, right, um, have limited budgets for training, right, for obvious reasons. Like it's it's really expensive when you start when you have a team of people and they're all taking ten thousand dollar courses, right? That adds up quite a bit. So a lot of organizations have limited budgets. So you know if it's five thousand or six thousand or eight thousand or whatever it is, like are you going to cover that personally? That other two thousand, maybe you don't have it. So again, a lot of organizations will cover the costs of this stuff but it is still very expensive. Yeah, I feel like for those reasons, you know, I'd love to rank the GPN as an S-tier cert because of the overall marketability. Like, you know, if you're looking at job postings for a penetration tester, nine times out of 10, you're gonna see the GPN listed on there. It's just kind of that blanket certification that everybody's looking for and everybody wants because SANS has, you know, placed and marketed themselves as industry standard for penetration testing certs. Um, I feel like the overall knowledge you can gain from it would be S tier. However, I feel like the price would bump it down to A tier. I don't feel like I can justify it being in the best of the best, um, solely considering the price on an individual, especially if you don't have company back support for paying for that certification. I feel like it's one of those that's just not as attainable yep. as the other ones that I'd like to put in the S tier. So. Yeah, I would agree with that. And in the fact that there isn't really much you can do if the if you take the course and the course is going to be updated. Like when I took the course, as far as I can remember, there was no notification like, "Hey, we're going to update it next spring" or something like that. You know, yeah. I, I wish there was more leeway or uh, uh, upfront notice of that. Right? They they must have a content calendar. I'm assuming they don't just all of a sudden decide. So doing something other than like $500 off, which I think was offered to me at the time. It's like, cool. It's nine grand. You're going to offer me <laughs> essentially, does that even cover like tax? Like does that even cover tax? But you know, I wish there was more done to that to encourage people to continue to take the cert when it gets refreshed. Right. Because something yeah. with the industry is, it, this is constantly moving, right? There's new techniques all the time. Things are are always getting uh, researched. There's new stuff coming out all the time. So if they refresh their course, right, and they want people to take it, I feel like they they should have some incentive to do that and not have to like bite that ten thousand dollar bullet again. But yeah, I, I would agree. I think it's a tier. I think it's top tier. Um, I think there's some hurdles and accessibility problems with it being that much and some of the other factors, but. Um, I think it's it's really good for for what it is. I agree. All right, Darius, GCPN. Awesome. Yeah. So the GCPN that's that is their cloud uh, penetration testing cert, 
And it's, I'm actually taking it this month, actually. So I'm, I'm interested to see how my opinion changes. Um, mm-hmm. As of now, I think you still tack on all of the sand stuff that we previously said. Like, it makes sense. It's it's consistent across the board, I think, when it comes to sand certs. Mm-hmm. I think my thing with the GCPN, however, is it lacks a practical portion, um, which to me, I think, is is I'm a little bit critical about any cert that's like oh just answer a couple of multiple choice questions right there you go you know like it's you get into the real world um you know i haven't been on an engagement where the answer has been a multiple choice you know kind of format (laughs) right so it's it's like i I feel like you you know i want there to be a practical portion so that you're able to actually apply what you've learned and so the fact that it doesn't have that honestly to me drops it down to a C tier personally. Um, I think the benefit, the major benefit of it is really going to be uh, the community aspect of it. I'm sure mm. that, you know, I may pick some stuff up. Um, right. But right. it's like, you know, how how feasible is, you know, what, what's taught in the course, how feasible is it in a real world yep. engagement to yeah. be seen? And I think that's, uh, that's kind of the der- determining factor in a lot of these certs is, A, can I learn this content elsewhere and b what is the uh what is the significance of the certification if not just for the name right so if it's just for the badge the gcpn great that seems like an expensive badge to get but if the company's paying for it cool um but if you know we like to strive for things that are going to help us on our jobs increase value um increase our knowledge and stuff like that so um i'm taking <clears throat> I'm taking your uh, your recommendation, Darius, and put it in C tier. You're going to get some flack for that, but you know. I think I might argue the C tier. I feel like the overall knowledge really? that you gain from the course, in tandem with it being one of you know the few current cloud um, penetration testing offerings that are out right now, I don't feel like there's an abundance of those, not at this level at least, because um, you know it's it's not just going through one cloud platform and giving you the base knowledge on it and then quizzing you on it. It's it's going through uh, AWS and Azure. It does leave out Google, does leave a little bit to be desired there. GCP is left off, but you know, you're also getting cloud native applications, CI, CD pipelines, your cloud pen testing fundamentals to build out processes to attack, you know, AWS and Azure will be included in there. Containers and Kubernetes, Kubernetes structures, um, there's even cloud enumeration that's taught in here. Like there, there's a long list of knowledge that is gained from this. And I feel like that bumps it up to B tier at a minimum because your job marketability based off what you know coming out of this certification, I feel like would bump that up. So better than the altered security courses and certifications or ACPT, where would you guys put it in? In B tier. See, I don't know. I still say C. I say C only because of the cost associated with it. And I still think, you know, you some of that, and it's yet to be seen. My opinion may change after this month, but I, I just, I wonder how much of this can be learned elsewhere for cheaper. And I think that's what kind of gets me in, 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 not only is it cheaper, but actually it being a practical exam. Because I think right. the thing was with sans certs is it's, you know, it's an open book test. Yeah. So like truth be told, I think it's like, you know, I think depending on what your goal is going into the course kind of matters. Like if you're going into it to learn, you'll you'll learn a lot. And I can agree with yep. that. But I think if you're also going into it, I'm just trying to check a box off yep. and get a cert, you're going to index and then pass because it's just a, it's an open yep. book test. Um so that's my only I don't know. I'm yeah, still I know, can see low I could maybe see low B tier, but you actually make a good point. And I think it's low B tier after hearing what you guys have both said. I think it's low B tier because of the index, right? Because of kind of the clunkiness of the exam, because of some of the content being just um, fairly rudimentary and introductory for, for what it is and what you pay. I, I'm i thinking low B tier now is my opinion on that. Wow. Um, even for GPIN? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Ah, even with the, uh, you know, the, the job marketability that comes with it? I think so. I think so wow. because the more the more people start blogging, the more people make start making videos and stuff like that. There's a lot of people that get jobs that don't have a G pen, that don't have any certifications, right? That's um, true. You know, I think 
I think there is, I think, I think hires uh, people who are, are in a position to hire recruiters, even maybe, you know, the more in tune ones with the industry are starting to look at things outside of just certifications alone. Um, and I think that's an important consideration is, you know, certifications exist in a vacuum and that's kind of how we're discussing it, but when we're talking about job marketability, you know, us having a podcast is really good job marketability, right? And us making videos and podcasts and that is really good too. And kind of showing off your work, speaking right at conferences. Um, so I think it's just one piece of the puzzle. Um, so yeah, my, my opinion on it now is, is, is B tier. Wow. Okay. And then I feel and like I, GCPN has to go to C tier then because at least GPN has a practical <laughs> portion. <laughs> and I think, you know, I haven't taken the new GPN. So okay. I took the old, I guess the older, uh, the last revision of GPN. So I don't know how it compares to the altered security, like active directory stuff. But GPEN did have quite a bit active active directory stuff, but it was fairly rudimentary and introductory stuff. Um, I don't know how it's changed, so I don't know the new GPEN, but I would say maybe I here. would at least put it before before the GCPN. And you know yeah. what? I'm probably going to eat these words. Oops. We'll probably have to do like a you know after after I take the course, we'll probably have yeah. to come back and I'll have to do like a whole apologetic video, and I'll probably be <laughs> like you know, hey, this is actually a really good course. Yeah, that'd be a good clickbait article. It's just like, you sad <laughs> and saying I'm sorry is the title <laughs> with like GCPN in the background. So sorry, Sans. I shouldn't have doubted you. All right, okay. all right. So, so we got a lot else to cover. So let's move through GMOB, GMOB, mobile yeah. device pen testing cert. Anybody want to chime in on that first? I think it'd have to be ranked alongside the GCPN. Um, like just on that B tier, like I think SAN certs are based off the criteria. I mean, I feel like they're all going to teach uh, the same uh, in terms of like content wise and content load. I feel like you're going to get the same regardless of which one you take. Yep. And it's all going to be good content regardless. But, you know, the drawbacks are the drawbacks on each and every one of them. So. Yep. You know, I'd be fine to loop that one in um, on the same low B tier that the other two have yeah, been I think, in. I think that if there's, unless there's some really extenuating circumstance about the cert that makes it a lot better, a lot worse, I would tend to agree with that. Unfortunately, we don't have Jordan here to kind of chime in on the mobile aspects of it in terms of content. Um, but I, I would tend to agree with that. Uh, I don't know how old the course content is, so I think that is a determining factor as well. So like GPEN, it was probably several years old and then they refreshed it, right? So now it maybe gets a bump. Um, I don't know where this is, but um, I think that's that's fair um, to put there without, you know, having deep understanding of, of the course content. Yeah. So I have a friend, I'm in a Discord server and I have a friend who's taken it. And from his perspective, his opinion on, on it was, it's a fun course. Um, you know, he felt like it really covers a lot of, you know, very much the basics of mobile pen testing. Mm -hmm. And like, let's be, let's be honest, there's not a lot of mobile pen testing certs out there. Um, and like, yep. you know, mobile pen testing is a very uh, niche thing within the penetration world itself. Um, from, my, from my understanding, it, you know, he told me they, a lot of it is what they cover. A bulk of it is, man, how do you even capture the traffic going in between, you know, the device Yep. And, you know, wherever the application or the device is trying to, you know, talk to and how that's a huge thing and that they focused really heavily on Apple, which I yep. think it's really, really good. I think more realistically, you know, we've talked to Jordan about it. You deal a lot more with Android yep. uh, and they cover the Android stuff, too. But I think they specifically co cover Apple, which, which I think is really good just because yep. it's, it's harder to do, which I think is awesome. Yep. Um, so I personally... I don't know. I could see G. I could see the G mob potentially being bumped up. Uh, I don't know if it has. You know what? Does it have a practical portion to it? I think that's that's, a that's kind question. of my thing because you know, if a practical mobile exam, you know, a practical mobile pen tester, I think that potentially bumps it up. In my, opinion. I actually didn't look when I was reviewing these and kind of preparing for this. I did not look to see if that had a. Out of practical portion. I'm sure Tyler will, will tell us here in a minute. I did move the CPTS down, by the way, because of what we talked about in the previous episode with just being new, not having name recognition. I think I think the sand certs are fairly in mid B tier. Um, I think there's a lot of good red team active directory content in 
the altered security courses. And I think those are, are really good for what they are. And especially at the, at the price and the lab environment you get, I mean, that is, is really good. Um, so I did move those slightly, but yeah, I don't know if, if that has a, a practical portion. Yeah. I just think, you know, as far as granted, I don't see a lot of job postings for just strictly mobile pen testers. Yeah. Uh, truthfully, but I, I do think it's like, man, I can't think of any other cert that. Yeah. It's kind of like wireless where there's like, there's not a lot, you know, it's kind of a really, it's kind of a niche subject. Uh, and there's not a lot of, of training slash certifications on mobile. Same with kind of wireless. But uh, as, as, I don't know if Tyler's still looking it up, but why don't we go to, to GWAPT, Darius, and tell us all your hot takes about that. Oh, man. So I I do have my GWAPT, and I, have you seen previous like uh, episodes of our podcast, I have a thing with web app certs in general. Uh, I just think the bulk of them are outdated and aren't realistic. Um, with the exception of maybe some of the uh, the pen tester lab stuff. Um, but, you know, it's like if you start out your course and it's like, yeah, sequ- basic SQL injection on a login page, it's like uh, I'm immediately just like, OK, you're, this is going to be outdated. You're not going to see that realistically, you know. Does it matter engagement. on the audience, though? Like, does it matter to you? Like GWPT, as far as I know, right, it's kind of an introductory to web apps. Would you agree? That's fair. And I think that's something I have to take into consideration is I got the cert. I was already doing web app pen testing. I already kind of had a a solid foundation down. So when I went to the course, it was very much like, ah, you know, I know this already. I think the thing is, uh, I think the test was fair. I will say, I think the practical portion of the test was fair. In fact, it was fun. I will say that. Um, Mm -hmm. So I, I can say that. I think my only complaint would be I had a similar thing to you where, you know, you say that they revamped the GPN after the fact. Yep. But when I went to t- the same week, I went to t- take the GWA or sit for that course. Um, and I think it's, you know, the SANS SCE 5, whatever, right? Well, there was an advanced web app pen testing course running at the same time, yep. but they were getting rid of it. Yeah. So it was like I was stuck in the, between this rock and a hard place between it's like, man, yep. you know, the 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 low the five forty two that's what it is the five forty two um, yep. actually has a cert attached to it the six forty two the advanced one doesn't I'm here for a week which one do I go with I need the cert right, right? and yep. so I wish I would I'm you know maybe in the future hopefully they'll revamp it hopefully they'll even incorporate some of the stuff from the six forty two uh, into the five forty two that'd be cool to see yep. um, but so as of now. I would, if only because I will say GWAPT has that brand recognition. You see it on, on, on job descriptions. I do think the community is great. Like I still talk to a good bit of the people I met from the course, Mm -hmm. all things considered. It is one of the more solid web app certs. I'm partial towards A tier for the same. I was so biased. As, it's so as biased. the G mob, I'm just saying. I would say so A tier. I would say A tier just because there's not a lot of web app certs out there. Same with like the G mob. I would consider the G mob before. You or after have the to, you'd have to say low, the same thing about A-tier. the GCPN. You would have no, 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 to say the same because thing because there's a practical there's a practical portion to the GWAPT and not the GCPN. There's no Does practical that portion. really bump it down that much? Because okay. you're taking eight practical questions, eight. It doesn't cover, you know, it's not a fully encompassing practical section, and you're likely going to forget your practical questions the moment that the exam's over. Like the, the key thing is the content that is taught in the exam versus the eight practical questions that you get on the exam, I would argue. Okay. Does it prepare mm-hmm. you to answer your practical questions? I think would be a more fitting question. Like but if the exam is taught yes. in that format. I think I would say yes. And I think I think to Darius's point, I think what what it lacks in uh additional practicality or practical questions, it makes up for in our clout category, which is like it's it's sought after in terms of uh job requirements. Right, so it has additional name recognition and additional value beyond that that makes it a little bit worthwhile. So I can I can see that. I would say I don't know. I'm thinking low A tier. If the G mob has a practical portion, I would say low A tier too. I guess I, I will 
I will, you know, eat my words after I take the GCPA and see what that's like, if that's the case. But so the answers that do have practical portions are 82 to 83 questions. The ones that do not are 75 questions. Uh, The GMOB is 75 questions. So going off a hunch, I don't they don't explicitly state if it does or not where I'm looking, but I would say that it does not have a practical portion. Okay. Well then if so I'm if okay I, leaving it then. The the new G Pen course content does look good. If I had taken it and I could see the content, I might put it in A tier, even even though uh even considering the drawbacks that I had already mentioned. So I I could agree with you, Darius. I, I I'm okay putting it low A tier. I think it is a fairly gold standard for the industry i am my personal beef with it is a little bit of the clunkiness a little bit of exam format is clunky and then cost right i think that's a a big factor to consider but but that being said um you know it 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 is a popular certification for a reason The, the the instructors all work in the industry the practitioners right it's not like in academia where you go to college and you have a computer science teacher who's who's never worked in IT or never done anything, you know, with computers or anything like that outside of academia. So the 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 teachers, the instructors all are practitioners. They've done this stuff. They're web app pen testers, they're pen testers, they're exploit developers, researchers, etc. So there is that that I think adds additional value. Um and to your point, Darius, being live in community in, in the community and being able to ask questions and ask the instructor who is, you know, certified by SANS to teach this uh, and has their own wealth of information and experience, I think is also valuable that we maybe are are over overlooking. So you know what? There we go. There you know we what? go. <laughs> man, man. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't know like which one goes first, but like it matters <laughs> if I could, I would, I would like stack them on top of each other. Right. Like one and two. Yeah. So that's fair. But I think, I think they differentiate themselves a little bit because of the instructors, right. Um, they market their instructors, their instructors are well known. Whereas something like offsec, like who, who teaches OSCP? Is it just a PDF, you know, video course, you know? Few you know, like CRTP, that's Rasta Mouse, right? The the RTO courses, that's Rasta Mouse. He's well known in the industry. PNPT, that's Heath, you know, well known in the industry. Some of these other ones are just kind of content that's made to be a course, right? The sand stuff is made to train you on the topic from a certified instructor who is who's done this in the industry like the ones I just mentioned. So I think that is a differentiating factor and that's why I would put it in A and not B. Sounds good. All right. Offensive security. So I know we're coming up close on time, so I'm just (laughs) going to bundle these kind of a little bit. Yeah, okay. Um, And we'll do kind of a speed run here at the end. I mean, mean, I'll make it easy for you. OSCP, S tier, all the other ones you can put in like the B tier, problem solved. Uh-oh. 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 So, Uh-oh. to to be to be fair, um, I do think the OSCP has probably some of the best name recognition for a pen, purely a pen testing cert, out of all of these that we've looked at so far. Um, so that I think deserves an S tier ranking for that. The cost is somewhat between like PNPT and SANS, right? It's they're. Or their learn one, I think, is like twenty five hundred dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is not bad, but still kind of pricey. Uh, the exam format, though, that's to me the biggest drawback, right? Is it's this twenty four hour sprint. You have to eat, sleep, take care of your family, do all your responsibilities, work, and take the certification exam and do a report, um, all while somebody's watching you. By the way, the entire time. Um, <laughs> so that to me. <laughs> It's a little bit, eh. and then also on top of that, uh, the course content is from what I heard here in reviews and what I have heard talking to people who have taken the exam is that it's a little bit um, dated in terms of you get a PDF, you get some course material and stuff like that. It's not as well done, I would say, as a course training course, 
in terms of accessibility to learning the content as some of the others. Like SANS has done a really good job with their online on-demand training, their labs and stuff like that. Um, so I personally, I would put the OSCP high B. That's where I, I would put it above. I would put it above the altered security stuff. Um, okay. Here, uh, I would put it high B uh, for those reasons. I don't think it's an S tier. I think it sets, and I, I think it's like these other ones. I think it sets a bad precedent. Although I will say, and, th and then I'll I'll be quiet and let you guys. Talk. <laughs> I will say though that it's intended to be difficult, and there's a there's a, I think there's a place for these types of certifications in the industry. These more um, harder or advanced certifications, even though this one isn't really marketed that way, but it's intended to be uh, a difficult learn from the ground up type certification where you're restricted on the tools you can use, you're restricted in the environment, and it's intended to be that way for a reason, for the integrity of the exam, and I get it. Um, I, just personally, not my cup of tea, but I'll let you guys talk now. Rebuttals. I'll save it for the end. I'll let you go for it, Tyler. <laughs> it's, uh, for a course for 90 days to have lab access and the certification, you're paying $1,600. When you take the certification, you're on a grueling 24-hour sprint where you have to compromise so many boxes and you know fulfill so many objectives to pass the actual exam. And then if you don't pass, you get put in a cool-down period and you can't take the exam for X amount of time. Um, I feel like it's not very beginner friendly at all. Um, you know, just going down our criteria list, you know, the education slash knowledge gained from the labs I couldn't speak to. Um, I would say that in order to pass the exam, the knowledge gain that you would have to have would be pretty immense um, because of, you know, all the active directory hoo that you would have to know in order to compromise and pivot to different machines. They also have a pretty extensive you know, list of tools that you can use on the exam that you would need to know, which are some of the common tools that you see on your internals, your pen, internal pen test. So, you know, overall, the education knowledge gained, I would give it, you know, high A tier, low S tier. Um, job marketability, I'd say, you know, it's one of the most recognized in the industry. So that would put it S tier as well. I just feel like, you know, I'd agree with Spencer on the testing format that, you know, it is kind of grueling and you know if you're a family man you have children you have responsibilities in your normal life it's it's one of the more that's not as easily attainable as others um i'd put it low a tier i'd put it low a tier okay so i look at the oscp kind of as the cisp of the off of like the offsec world that's kind of how <laughs> that's kind of how i wow view it. uh <laughs> ouch that's an ouch so, like, here's the thing, right? I, I completely understand the testing format sucks. Like, the whole, okay, you got 24 hours to, you know, get to a set amount of points, um, and then another 24 to basically, like, do your reports, submit all your stuff, right? I think, though, that that, that format is what also builds up the community, though. Because the community of OSCP holders is all this thing of, like, man, we went through this grueling challenge yet yeah, is it as is it realistic to like a real world exam Eh, you know not exactly like the pmpt for example that for that testing format way more realistic um but i think there's, i think there's something to say about you know man we we went and you know for 48 hours i hacked on some stuff and i was able to get enough points i think that with the oscp there's a little bit of strategy involved with it mm -hmm. um because it's not just you know, there are different ways to get to the minimum, by, sure. you know, amount of points that you need to pass. Yep. Um, so I think that part of it is kind of cool in the sense yep. that it's, you know, it is a challenge. It's kind of like a game. And I think to me, it's, <laughs> it's a like, CPF. Yeah, to, to, you know, to me, as far as like some of the basics go, it's, 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 it's a hard, it's a tough exam, more, mainly because of the format, I would say more so than just the material that's in, mm -hmm. that's on the exam. Yep. Um, just from talking with people, the bulk of the exam is going to be, it's really just going to be don't fall down rabbit holes, um, which I think is something that that's a great lesson to learn because I fall down on rabbit holes every single engagement. Um, and, you know, I think the other 
The other part of it is, you know, man, can you take an exploit and let you find online on exploit DB or, you know, some basic stuff? And can you, do you know it well enough to modify it a little bit to get it to work? And I think that's, you know, an extremely valuable skill to have. Sure. Uh, and I think that combined with purely the fact that it is the pin testing cert, I just, I just think it's S tier. I, I just, I, every you single job posting you see, first cert they're going to have listed OSCP. I still think that there are other certs that are better from a material perspective, but if I have zero pen testing experience, I'm trying to land a job, what cert do I get? OSCP You're not getting OSCP. OSCP. If you have OSCP. zero pen testing experience, <laughs> out the window. Not I, th- I, think if, I think if you have IT experience, you want to get into pen testing. If you go through the course material, you'll get that mindset. You do some try hack me, some hack the box, you can pass the OSCP. I will say I have I have read a number of reviews of people who have no pen testing experience and they train for the OSCP and they and they clear it. Um, so I I have no doubt that 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 it's possible. I think there is a certain my uh type personality type that is required. I think there's a certain amount of flexibility that's required um, to do it. Uh, I think I almost think that new newcomers are better off taking it because of the way that it teaches you from the ground up the OSCP way. Not saying that's the best way to learn or the best way to conduct a pen test, right? But it teaches you a certain methodology to use in their exam. Um, I think one of the drawbacks is the lack of of um, kind of assume breach or a typical internal pen test environment, right? It's starting you on Kali. It's very Kali based. Um, I admittedly don't use Kali really that often on internal pen tests. Um, we do a lot of internal assume breach. I don't use Kali a whole lot. Uh, so this would be a difficult cert for me because I don't use Kali a lot. So I'd have to get used to doing that and ch- kind of changing my methodology and my techniques to to use that. Um, that's not good or bad. It's just different, right? And I will say there is, a there like I said, there is room for something like this, a difficult cert, I think. Um, I would agree because of the name name recognition and because of um the community and how well it's regarded I I I would agree I think it's I think it's possibly S tier A tier high I feel like it's got to be high A tier cuz I feel like S is your cream of the crop best of everything and I feel like it lacks one category to put it S tier yeah. But, you know, with that being said, I think highest A tier would be fitting. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Is like if it's just lacking one of the things, I would say the exam format is the the biggest uh drawback to me. I think everything else is probably pretty good. I think the course content is probably really well done in terms of content. There's there's a lot there, obviously, if anybody's looked at the syllabus. Um I would say, I don't know. I, I hate I, I don't really want to rank a, a CPS tier. <laughs> You know, you feel deep down in your heart, you're like, ah, but it really is. But I'm okay with I'm okay with high A tier. I'll give I'll I'll give high A tier. My opinion might change in the next five minutes. So let's <laughs> <laughs> but we all know in our hearts it's S tier. It's it's the pen testing cert. Yeah, I, I like I said, my opinion might change in the next four minutes. But um, <laughs> so OSCP, OSWA, OSW, OSED, these are all offensive security certs. Uh, OSEP is experienced pen tester. That's kind of the, the follow-on to OSCP. It's more advanced. There's more defense evasion and app locker bypass and AMSI bypass and stuff like that. OSWA is their introductory web app pen testing certification, which Darius, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Um, OSWE is their cert- OS uh, offensive security web expert, uh, which is kind of like the next uh, step for the web the stuff. Next, yeah. next step for the web app stuff, which... I'm also curious to hear your thoughts, Darius. And then OSED is exploit developer, uh, which again is is more advanced cert. Um, so thoughts on these four? I, I know we're kind of getting long, but I do want to wrap up and yeah. uh, get this. Are we, are we, so we're going to group these together? Yeah, let's group them together, but just okay. talk about them individually. Yeah, so I think as far as the web app ones go, um, I've looked at the course load for the OSWA. I think it's very similar to everything that's else that's out there, like the EWPT and some of the other ones, mm-hmm. uh, personally. So um, I think, you know, from a foundational perspective, you'll probably pick up a few things enough to, like, go out and get a bug bounty. 
Mm, probably not, you know? Yeah. Um, now the OSWE, I think is a very interesting one because that one, you take, it's a completely different approach. And I haven't seen another web app exam that's like this. Um, yeah. With the OSWE, it's not, hey, here's a web app that's up and running. Go, you know, tackle it. Go see what you can find. It's here's the source code. Yep. Go read the source code. And by reading the source code, find the bugs or find the vulnerability. Then you have to write an exploit for it. And then you have to then go and execute it. Right. And I think that right there is, is, is huge um, because it, once again, it, it forces you to really read and, and know, and, you know, know how to code and know your stuff and multiple languages in order to pass it. And I think that's a huge thing for me because, you know, we we'll often get asked, how do you get into bug bounty? How do you start? How do you get into web app pen testing? And my number one answer is learn how to develop. Yep. And so this kind of reinforces that in my opinion. Yeah. I really liked, um, in reading a couple of reviews, I really like how the OSW has, um, what do they call it? Um, they have extra miles, they call them. And it's yep. stuff that does not have notes. There's no walkthrough. There's no guide. It's just extra stuff that you have to take what you learn from the course and kind of build on that to exploit it and do it. So yeah, to your point, the source code view, big, big part of that. And that I really like, that's a, it's a, interesting addition to the course that I don't think the other ones have. Would you put it in a tier because of that? Hmm, I think <clears throat> I have seen the OWSC on, on job, on job postings. Um, I, I, you know, the format still very similar to OSCPC. Yeah, I could say a tier. I would, I would put that in a tier, um, but definitely I would say probably on the mid to lower a tier. I think, okay. well, I think where you have it now is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and then the OSCP, the OSEP, OSWA. I mean, let's put the OSWA. I think this is probably low B tier. I think to your point, Darius, it all the content it seems pretty straightforward in terms of what you're going to find ever, everywhere else online in the Burp Suite, um, practitioner exam, you know, EWPT, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think there's anything super exciting there, and it is fairly expensive. So, um. OSEP, that's their experience professional. Again, I think it's probably on par, uh, if not a little bit better than the altered security because of the defense evasion stuff. Uh, security doesn't really go into defense evasion or a, a ton. There might be some app locker stuff and maybe some AMZ stuff. Um, I think OSEP is probably a high B. And admittedly, I don't know a ton about OSED. Um, I just so know I don't, stuff. I just know, I know from what I've heard, it's it's a beast. I've heard it's very difficult, yeah, and it's it's a grueling exam. Um, I think all the same things apply to OSCD as the other ones. Um, I don't know if we want to fairly, you know, rank it somewhere, but um, you know, the, the way I kind of look thoughts. at it is, I don't see it a lot on job postings. You know, I I don't think it. I think it's a great one to have. Yep. I think you'll you know. I don't think there's a lot of people that have it just in the industry altogether. Um, yep. So, but you know, I just don't think it has that, that brand recognition. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I, I would put it low B. Um, I think there is additional value in it because if you get the OSWE, OSED and the OSEP, you get the OSCE three or whatever, OSCE three, which is the combined cert, which is very rare, right? I think, John Hammond has a, I think there's probably a handful of other people that have um, that certification, which is the combination of three different certs. Um, so I think there's value there, but um, for the sake of time, I, I think I think that's fair. Cool, it works for me. All right, Tyler, air up. Pentest Plus. In terms of entry level pen testing certs, I would rate this one pretty high. You're going to learn an inch deep, mile wide. You're going to learn cloud pen testing, mobile pen testing, wireless pen testing, internal, web app, and external. You're going to learn six pillars of pen testing all in the course content for this. Um, it's on the cheaper side of your certifications, and it's with an industry recognized name. So, you know, if you're like me, just getting into the field, you want to certify yourself as a penetration tester. Um, I would say 
you know, your best bet, your quickest avenue would be the pen test plus. Um, in terms of practical questions on the exam, you have maybe three at the very beginning, and then you have 70 multiple choice. So it is primarily multiple choice. Um, I don't, I don't think I could put it in the A tier category. Um, I don't know. I think it, it I would say B tier, so, but I'm also biased because, you know, I like to serve. So you were, yeah, you were already pen testing before you got this. So how well did it, do you think, help you in, you know, in a practical sense, other than being kind of like a, a stamp there, a certification that says I'm a pen tester now kind of thing? I would say some of the tools on the exam are dated. However, I would say a lot of the tools are not. Um, it just, it, it's your fundamentals. So in terms of knowledge gained, I would say there was not a huge breadth of knowledge that was gained from the certification. Um, I feel like I didn't have to put in, you know, 40 plus hours studying for the certification because I already had the background in pen testing and I already had so much um, knowledge from just real world. Yep. Uh, however, you know, um, the wireless, the cloud, the internal stuff, you know, there were some good questions and good content that I learned from those aspects of the exam and uh, studying for the exam. So I don't know. I feel, uh, you know, once again, inch deep, mile wide, you know, you're going to get yep. a huge breadth of knowledge, but not a lot of in-depth knowledge. So, yep. Would you put it before any of these other ones on B tier? Like, is it better than GCPN or OSWA? It's hard for me to justify Pentest Plus being better than the GCPN. Because marketability yeah. for Pentest Plus, um, it is a newer certification. Hasn't been around as long, um, but it's not really one that you see on a lot of job listings and job postings. So it's marketability yep. is not as high as other ones. Um, yep. The testing formats, you know, also primarily multiple choice. Um, yep. The cost is low. I feel like the cost is very reasonable for what you get. And then, you know, your yep. education and knowledge gained is also, you know, very reasonable for what you're paying yep. for. So. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So if we, were, if we were to ever do like just like, you know, just IT cert, cert tier lists in general, you would find that my thing, I have an issue with CompTIA certs or not necessarily an issue. I just, I view CompTIA certs as they are the vendor that's like, hey, you want something that's entry level here's the company for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's a place for that and it's needed. Um, I, but I do know that, you know, their exam format, it's, in my opinion, mostly rote memorization. Um, I think, you know, when I look at entry-level certs, like I think the EJPT often gets compared to the Pentest Plus. And for mm -hmm. me, I think the EJPT is a little bit more practical and you'll actually learn a little bit more than the pen test plus from like a practical standpoint but i think the pen mm -hmm. test plus prepares you more so from like you know you'll be able to talk about the subject i guess yeah um and so i think i think you know i think b tier where it's at is there i could argue c tier you know c tier comp to c tier that's just my personal opinion <laughs> in, in general but uh i don't know i just i think i think comp to asserts are great. I just know at some point it's like you're going to want more, and I, I, don't, I, I just I've yet to see a CompTIA cert that offers that that's fair. more. You know, it just it's it all it seems like all their stuff is just yeah. entry level. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I think I think it serves a need, right? I think CompTIA in the, the Pentest Plus, Network Plus, A Plus, all that stuff, it serves a, a need to take somebody who has no experience whatsoever, like doesn't know what Nessus is and what a port is, and gets them to some foundational level of understanding so for that i think there is some value there and i i would put it low b for that yeah so i feel like every comp to exam is going to be a get your foot in the door exam regardless mm -hmm. of which one it is um i feel like if you're trying it's to market if you're trying to market yourself comp to would be one of your cornerstones for doing that because their exams are more attainable than you know, 90% of the ones listed on the screen just because their exam format is easier for beginners and people who don't have the in-depth knowledge. I feel like once you yep. get into any of the other certs listed on the screen, you need, you know, you, you're already past the sure. foundational knowledge. 
So, you know, I feel like they satisfy the requirement that they set out to satisfy, which is sure. getting people jobs. So I'll say this, and this is the last thing I'll say, because I know we're pressed for time. You're not going to get a pen test job with a pen test plus. I, I, I just don't think that's realistic, and which is why I, I wouldn't put it. I still say What about a junior cool. junior pen tester? Ah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't think let's let's say know. let's say you have a background in IT, like maybe you're a help desk. You got a pen test plus, and you're applying for a junior pen test position. I just I don't know because I see. Granted, I know this is the market. I've seen junior positions asking for the OSCP, which is like sure, which, you know. So like I just I don't I just don't see it. But well, we can agree that's uh, that's as unrealistic as asking for like seventy five different. Uh, special. I mean, that's right? fair. That's like asking for, you know, a, a sock analyst to have a CISPI, right? So yeah. I think it's in the same category. Um, I would say, I don't know. I, maybe. I just think, I, I personally think the EJPT is a better junior, like junior pen tester. Oh, you have your EJPT. I would go with that person more so than the pen test plus. If their resumes look exactly. If I'm marketing myself, I'd rather have pen test plus than EJPT. I would rather tell somebody that I'm pen test plus certified over junior penetration tester certified. However, at the end of the day, you know, I feel like pen test plus satisfies the requirement of telling a client, Hey, I'm pen to, you know, I'm certified. I'm a certified penetration tester. And there's a lot of bias with it too, because some people have not heard of eLearn security as much and know much about them compared to CompTIA, right? Yeah. CompTIA is a big brand, a big name, been around much longer. So there is that, right? There's bias with all of this. That's fair. So we're getting to close to the end here. Uh, the next couple are the um, C uh, CRTO, the red team operator uh, in RTO2. So RTO1, RTO2, this is from Zero Point Security. Uh, this is by Rasta Mouse is, is how he goes online. Um, so these, uh, I'm currently taking RTO1 right now, the red one. Uh, it's a very well done course. Uh, the content is is very up to date. It's relevant. Uh, it's practical. It takes you from start to finish what a typical red team engagement might look like, uh, with the emphasis on kind of being a little bit more stealthy than normal. So beyond what GPen is going to teach you with, you know, connecting to the network, running nmap scans, probing things, you know doing analysis that way, this is a, the RTO is going to be a little bit more stealthy, right? It's going to talk about things like Kerber roasting uh, in more depth and kind of the OPSEC ways to do it or not to do it. Uh, a lot of the course has OPSEC considerations with it. So when you're performing lateral movement, <clears throat> there are certain OPSEC considerations you want to take into con you know consideration, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, there are some places in the course content that I was wanting more. So that it's a, it's a bit brief in some of the areas than I would have expected. And the course is all mostly written. So it's all written out course content that you have to read. There is no, there's not a lot of video content with it. However, there is a lab and the lab is tremendous. It's great. Um, there's like 12 machines or something like that. It's a very good way to practice what you're learning in the course. And it's probably got the best lab uh, I would say the best Active Directory Lab, or one of the best out of the courses that we are, or the certifications that we're looking at, I would say it's probably got one of the best labs. Um, the the price is also very reasonable as well. Um, I, I mean, it's it's very very affordable. Um, the community is great. They have a Discord. Great. People answer questions. Rasta Mouse himself will answer questions very promptly. I think this is probably as good as you can get for a red team certification. Um, this kind of goes beyond pen testing a little because it's a red team cert. So we're kind of going out of scope a little bit. Um, I'll kind of be, I'll kind of get to the point. I think this is S tier. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons uh, to put it in S tier. I think it is more approachable than the OSCP while still covering a lot of the same content in the OSCP and not being as intimidating of an exam. You get four days, uh, 48 hours over the course of four days. So you can, you can work, you know, essentially 12 hours a day, which is very reasonable. Um, and there's no report. You just submit flags. I think it's very approachable. I think this is an S tier cert. I think this is what an S tier cert should look like. Although there are some minor drawbacks, 
uh, like some, being brief in content in some areas, but for the cost, the lab, the course content, the community, um, you know, the exam format, I think this is what an exam, a pen testing course slash red teaming course should look like, you know, in a nutshell. So, so that's my hot take. I can agree with everything, but it belonging in S tier. And I would say, A tier. <laughs> I'm just, and the only reason why I say is like, you're right though. The community is great. I think the fact that, you know, it covers, uh, you know, cobalt strike as in depthly as it does is huge. Um, I, I, I think that from a red teaming perspective, like it's awesome. But I will say it's like, what, two, three years old? I don't think it has the name recognition as some of these other certs. So, you know, I, I, I if you look, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't see job postings looking for that cert. Um, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. So I, I would agree that it doesn't have the clout or name recognition that OSCP does. However, the people that have taken it and the, like, you know, people have gone through the course, I think recognize the value of the um of the course over something like an oscp but to your point darius i would agree it doesn't have the same name recognition um but i do see it on on some job postings i i know you know there are people looking for the cert so i don't know because I, I i don't know i'm conflicted about that um because i think the material is great and i think you actually from a practical standpoint what you learn is going to be far more valuable than the oscp I just think from a job posting or like a job perspective, I still say OSCP is the king. I, I don't see, like, I see more jobs looking for OSCP than I do for the CR, uh, is it the CRTO? Uh, yeah, CRTO. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I would, I don't, uh, admittedly, I don't know much about the RTO2 because I haven't taken it yet. That's a follow on. It's more defensivation, kind of like OSEP. Again, um, we're, we're noticing a trend, right? Introductory red teaming and then more advanced red teaming, defense evasion, um, you know, writing your own C sharp tooling, scripting, more advanced stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, I, I could see a world where we put OSCP in S tier potentially. You know, maybe like <laughs> low S tier. I th <laughs> I, don't know, I think I think if CRTO is S tier, then OSCP is S tier. I, I I just feel like they serve different roles. But like I think if if we're going off of S tier is supposed to be like perfect in everything, I think CRTO lacks the job marketability. And so if you know, yeah, if that's S tier, then OSCP is S tier. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe our S tier is too too grueling as well. Our our requirements for the S tier are grueling, yeah. but you know. I, I can agree with Darius. I think if OSCP is A tier, CRTO is A tier. I feel like the value Would add. Would you guys from, put GPen I mean, in A tier then? No. Uh, Knowing that, yeah, I think, like, I think if it's if it's is, missing like one. <laughs> so you think you still I think, think GWAP and GPen? Uh, I think I, the price far out. I think I think you still put it in an A tier. I think it belongs in A tier personally. Still A tier. I, I still say A tier. I I think I the think cost it's high A tier just, then. Yeah. I will say high. If we're if I can agree with high A yeah. tier, I think the cost absolutely think, murders it. Like it just yeah. swamps it. If it wasn't think, so, if it wasn't so expensive, yeah. sure S tier. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I think we maybe we're being a little too strict on the top top tiers, and I think it is fair to. I mean, these are the most well known certs, right? OSCP, GPen, GWAP, um, yeah. OSCP. Uh, OSEP. I mean, these few here in the upper left-hand corner are are very well known and, and res highly respected. Um, so any one of these, I think, um, help you get a job without a doubt, right? Or yeah. or move up in your career, get a senior level position if you have a couple of these, maybe. So. Agreed. Okay. Uh, I think I yeah. I, so I would agree. I, I think I, we're happy with the ranking right now. I think OSCP to your point, Darius. I, I think it does degree be. I do, it does deserve to be an S tier. GPen GWAP does to be deserve to be high A tier. Um, regardless of the cost. So I I will compromise on that. Uh, RTO two I think is high A tier as well. I think it, it it's an exceptional course. The content is great. Lab all that everything I said about the RTO one. Uh, okay. The last one, uh, we're going to, we're going to ignore these last two down at the bottom. 
So PNPT is going to be the last one. So I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. <laughs> Video done. We did it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but you're right. Yeah, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big fanboy uh, of TCM security and what they've done with their certification and their course and their and their training content. Um, Darius and, and Tyler, I'll let you kind of chime in first, and then I'll kind of close it out. With so my thoughts. I think I think the PMPT is honestly the perfect exam. I think it has the potential to be the OSCP killer. As it can take, because it's get it's gaining more recognition, it's going to continue to do so. I know I, I would not be surprised if at some point you stop seeing OSCP as much and you see more PMPT because I think the testing format is extremely realistic. Um, it's like on the nose. The material that you learn is great. The um, the um, Material covered is realistic. Like I, I yeah. think it truly belongs in the S tier. I can't argue with it. I, yeah. I, I think it's in the right spot. Yeah, because you're not just testing one pillar of pen testing, internal pen testing. You're going from an external pen test to an internal pen test to, you know, end yeah. goal of the exam. Um, I feel like it's very affordable. You're paying $300 for the voucher. Um, you're paying 400 if you want training. And that includes 50 hours of training. And you're covering stuff like an external pen test playbook, OSINT, you know, your, your things for your external pen test you're getting while also getting knowledge gained on internal pen testing. Um, yeah. So I feel like your marketability and knowledge gained from that is just, you know, surpasses any of the others. And I feel like it's, it's exam yeah. format. It's also very reasonable, you know, five days for the exam. And then two days to write a report like this exam was yep. built for people, you know, real life people, not, you know, your yep. grueling professionals. So, you know, I feel like the way it's catered itself is, you know, it's yep. very deserving of that number one spot. Yeah, yeah I no, think Heath, so. Heath has done a great job with it, honestly. I agree. Yeah, I think I think what Heath's mission to set out and, and create a intro to almost intermediate level pen testing certification that's accessible and uh thorough and detailed uh while not being too overwhelming uh is spot on um like you said it's a five-day exam um when i took it it took me about two days and then i did the report i think on the end of the second day or third day or something and it, it took my time with it and it was great knowing that i didn't have the stress of having to do it in 24 hours just that alone um took so much stress off of my back when i was taking it, it was like wow it's like a normal pen test. I get to take my time, write my notes. Like I don't have to worry about coming up with a gimmicky process to like quickly enumerate everything. Um, you know, I can go through the process and the methodology that is established in the course, and it teaches you um, a good methodology. And I think it sets a good precedent. And it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't teach people to get to the lowest common denominator of doing it, doing it as quickly as possible to get it done. Um, the pricing is reasonable. Like you said, Tyler, you have to do OSINT, do a little OSINT on the target. You um, do an external pen test. You get access. You have to pivot. Internal pen test. There's AD. It's very typical uh, internal pen test after that. Um, and it's really, really well done. The community is great. And I think what he is doing with his TCM uh, academy and all the courses and the certification he's creating is really good it's accessible uh, and i'm a really big fan of it um and i think it teaches pen testing the right way and teaches uh and in uh assesses you the right way as well in, in a practical way that is not overwhelming and overburdensome uh on the on the test taker so yeah, I mean, it's a fair exam i think everyone i've heard to who's taken it even those who like failed they're, they're they, they've been like oh yeah it was a fair exam i just you know next time i take it i'm gonna you know do something yep. you know this instead i got stuck on this one part that's fair and they you know took the yep. you know go from there so tcm yep. security was just i mean that the entire company is just built for people like built based around people you know veterans and students both get a 20 percent discount on you know the exam in addition to that, it doesn't expire. You know, as of yep. March 17th, they made it to where the exam, your credential doesn't expire. Um, unlike, you know, majority of the other ones where you have to constantly submit continuing education units to uh, maintain yep. your credential. This one you do not. So, and I don't know. 
yeah. just felt like when he made this course, he made it with people in mind and that, you know, everybody has a life and things they need to do. Yeah. Which is very nice. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's a very well-rounded certification. I think it takes the top spot in my mind of, of what a certification and training course should be for a pen tester, um, especially one who's just getting in or has some introductory intermediate knowledge. Uh, I think it's spectacular. So I know we've we've this episode has <laughs> run very long. <laughs> we're, we're like at an hour or a little bit over. So if you're still listening, I, we very much appreciate it. Uh, listening to us rant about these certifications. Uh, any, any last minute thoughts from anybody? Go get your PMBT. That's it. Oh, there we go. Wraps <laughs> up. That's it. Yeah. Sponsor, sponsored by DCS security now. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, in all seriousness, thank you everybody for, for listening and or watching. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to sit with us and, and kind of chop it up with these certifications. Uh, we hope that this was maybe uh, entertaining or enlightening to those of you who maybe haven't heard about some of these or, or were looking for some information about them. Uh, as always, we release new episodes every Wednesday. Uh, and you can find us on offsec.blog. We're on YouTube at Cyber Threat POV and every kind of everywhere else under that name. So uh, see everybody next time. Thanks.